My name is Ivor Knorr. I was born in Wrangell in 1955, 69 years. We bought this property from my uncle in 1990. My grandpa, Ivor Peterson Knorr, moved to Wrangell in like 1908 or 1906 or something like that and he came up and went saning. They said that there was a lot of fish up there and a person could make a lot of money. He was, he came over from Norway and, stu and they stopped in Portland, Oregon and the family stayed there and he came to Wrangell and went fishing for the summer. Well, it, it changed, it changed a lot of different things. It, it was, uh, it was a dairy at first, before that they had a sand and gravel business and they owned where Shoemaker Bay is right now and they did sand and gravel and then the state of Alaska wanted to make a boarding school out at Five Mile so they sold the property to the city of Wrangell so that they would build a boarding school out there so they could move the road five more miles out the road and they'd have uh, electricity that far out the road for other people. So in 1933, they bought eight cows from Petersburg and brought them over here and this is they, they got a four acre, four acre parcel from the state of Alaska and, and this is right, the four acres is right here. And uh, my dad, Bert Nor got four acres and his brother, Ingar, got four acres. So there was 12 acres right through here. And uh, that's where they started the dairy right here. Well, my grandpa, Ivor Peterson, and he had four sons and they all worked on the in the dairy part and the sand and gravel. Well, um, back in the day, all the milk, it, you know, they they sold milk to the whole town. They delivered it. They had uh, 150 acres of land up the river, and they took the cows up there and milked them, and then in the summertime and brought the milk back to town. And then Ingwall was in town, and they did the bottling and, and the cooling it off. They had um, freezer units and they cooled the milk off and then they did deliveries every day to whoever wanted to buy milk. They had hogs and chickens. They had hogs and that's how they cleared all the land. It was big, you know, when they got it, it was all trees and they fenced it all in. And, and if you know hogs, they, they root, they get underneath they kill things, they eat the bark and the trees and stuff like that and so they just rooted out all the trees in here and then when the trees died they cut the trees down and then they dynamited the stumps out and so it was all all clear all along through here like for eight acres and you know it grew back so that in the winter time the cows would roam around and they, there wasn't much to eat in the winter time though. Because uh, winter time they had to have hay, and they what they did was they two of the boys had uh, gill netters and they would gill net on the Stickeen River, and you know for cohos and king salmon, and they'd sell that, and a lot of that money went to pay back. They had to buy uh, straw and hay for um, the cows to eat all winter and they'd store it upstairs in the barn. And uh, in 19, I think it was 1947 or something like that, it was, it was like a couple years after the war, World War II, um, they had a longshore strike in Seattle and uh, nothing came to wrangle. And so they, they didn't have, you know, they, they, they grazed the cows all winter or summer up on the flats up the river and then when they came back to town, they didn't have any food for them. They had, you know, enough for a little while, and so they had to start killing off the cows. And they, they kept a couple of them, but by that time, they already had um, other businesses that they were gonna, you know, get into. 
I don't think they ever did. They they came from here, and there was a it wasn't a road down there. It was just like a, a path or a trail what people walked back and forth or you know had their horses or whatever they did back then and our little mud trail and they just walked the beach all the way to town with the cows and uh, they had another their house was in town on 728 case avenue where um dan and twyla my dad lived there and dan and twyla lived there and then now twyla lives there and they had a uh, a big barge on the beach there. They had all kinds of buildings and, and barns in town also. And they just walked the cows. They'd get on the barge and then they'd run the barge up to the flats and the cows would get out and they'd stay up probably from when it was probably May to September. I'm not sure. I think they were jerseys. And they... I think it, it was the strongest breed for this type of uh, environment because, I mean, cows, everything around here is wet, and so cows' hooves were always nasty. You know, if, if you look at deer and, and, and moose and stuff like that were, you know, they're, they're made for this type of weather, but cows and, and things weren't, and so they had a lot of problems with hoof rot and things like that. Um, a lot of this stuff was still around when I was a kid. Um, we lived in a house down on by the highway until I was four years old, and then we moved to town, but all the buildings and the docks and, and the barges and stuff were all in, they were still around and so in into the mid-60s. And uh, that's when everything started falling apart and there was a great big building over here and and when they when they stopped with the um with the farm with the dairy part of it then they built the boat the Ivor P. Nor my uncle did with with help from other old Norwegian um shipwrights and they built it in Wrangell and then they he went out and he bottom crawled for uh, scrap fish. They had, he had mink and he built two big mink pens out here and so they would uh, skin mink in, in the fall time and, and sell the mink hides. And so that's what I remember most was the mink and, and the, you know, the whole thing of um, with bottom fish, flounders and stuff like that. They grind it up and he had a big building right where our house is now and it had uh, big freezer units in it and we grind all the mink, the, the food up for the mink and then he would feed them all summer long with, in winter with that and, and he would lease the Ivor P out and they would fish it all summer long. And then uh, I think they shut the um, mink farm down in like 74 or 75. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, politically correct to kill mink for their skins. People people didn't like it anymore. So they, they didn't make much money. So that was turned down and then they moved south and we that's when we bought the place from them in, in 1990. But it was like abandoned for a lot of years. He came up in the summertime, but he didn't. He didn't live in the wintertime anymore. So the house and everything kind of got disrepair, kind of falling down.